What's up guys? Welcome back to Let's Play Bring More Witches. So we're going to go ahead and talk to Lizzie Stride after fumbling over a rock. And then we're going to adjust our setup a little bit for our bone charms. Like I that promised. Is garbage Edgar. I'm still living with his incompetence. He let the Hatters cripple the Undine. The ship seems fine to me. They took the engine coil. We're dead in the water. What is it? Can we make a new one? They don't make them anymore. Not for an engine like the Undines. We'll have to get it back. The geezer still leads the header gang, right? I'll pay him a visit. It won't be that easy. There's a snag. Always is. What's this one? The geezer's about a hundred years old by now. He's got it rigged so that if he dies, the whole place gets gassed. So be real careful around him. Got him a nurse and everything. Maybe you can cut a deal for that engine coil. Turn on a charm. One of the Hatters gave me their door password in exchange for keeping the rest of his fingers. It's whalebone. I never got to use it on account of the gas. And being in jail. Just be ready to move when I get back. Great. So right when we thought we were done, they throw another curveball at us. The Hatters stole a vital engine component for the ship. Lovely. So it looks like we got to get it back. We can either do this the easy way or the hard way. So time to get that last, uh, I think that's a bone charm up here before we leave. It's up here on this rooftop where we saw that mysterious person a little while ago. Alright, and it's a corrupted charm. If I haven't explained what the corrupted charms are, we only get them in the DLC. And they basically, um, they have a perk as well as a drawback. All of them have a pro and a con instead of just one single ability that they give you. So... It may increase one trait and then decrease another trait. Um, my primary run through the main campaign of Dishonored, like I said, I didn't get any upgrades because that was the criteria for that type of run that I did. So I never expanded how many bone charms I could carry. But in this run, I definitely like to increase the amount of bone charms I can have so I can make the best use of these passive abilities. I didn't change my setup really uh, that much, but I just wanted to show off some of the other bone charms we have. I have most of the ones I care about, although we can get pretty interesting RNG at the beginning of the run and uh, that'll determine some of the better ones we could get. We got we got some decent ones this time around but I kinda like my setup for my previous test run a little bit better. But yeah, it's kind of, it's sort of like, like I said in Bioshock Infinite where the gear is random but we have more control over that in this game where uh, if we carry over our save file from Knife of Dunwall into Bring More Witches we'll have a lot of the same setup as we did at the end. So the uh, Bone Charms we find will be a little bit more specific but of course, if we're starting from the if we're starting from the beginning, they have to give us a fair amount of stuff at first. All right, so now the dead eels are on our side, fighting against the Hatters. So if we get in the middle of one of their spats, they're not going to go after us. We just have to worry about the Hatters now. There's actually a way to get both sides to be neutral against us, where we don't have to fight anyone, and that would be more than ideal if we were going for a, a sort of pacifist run. But I don't know necessarily that we're doing that. So, like I said, we can do this either the easy way or the hard way. And Dow de uh, definitely likes to do things the hard way, so we'll see how that goes. So there's an arc pylon over here I want to avoid. Uh, we're going into the, uh, what do you call it, the Hatter Territory, the textile mill. So I'm going to go ahead and blow this guy up with the oil tank and then run for the door. Luckily we know the password. Of course we can't use it until we kill this guy, unfortunately. This will save us having to encounter these guys over and over again every time we pass by here. Or we could just, you know change the arc pile on to, to kill them if we wanted to, but it's not really worth the time. Alright, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in the textile mill, going back and forth. The Hatters are using the textile machines to make shrouds for the plague dead. Now we know why they took the engine coil. The man who runs the Hatters is more cunning than he looks. He can flood this place with a toxic gas. In time, it'll eat through our air filters. You may have to make a deal. So there's that whole moral ambiguity thing again. Now that we know that the Hatters are using the textile mill to create shrouds for dead plague victims, it doesn't seem so bad. We almost don't want to take the engine coil from them. But like I said, we kind of have to get what, what we want, and being that this is a high chaos run, it's more so in line with how we think Dowd would conduct himself. But I'll discuss that a little bit more in the uh, 
the truth and not so true aspects of that when we uh, get to the end of the let's play so anyway we're just going to continue on with the preconceived notion that we are blatantly evil and we're going to take and steal everything we want and kill whoever we want to get what we want so the actual mill itself is pretty heavily defended there's guards all over the place and there are strip wires at every entrance including a um, wall of light so there's not a whole lot of easy ways to get in here but conveniently if we jump up here to this rooftop and get in that way, not only will we have an easy way in, but we'll be able to get some good stuff in this room as well, including a rune. So we'll take that, we'll take that grenade. And uh, there actually is an item in here that is important, that uh, bull rat fetus, which is gross, is uh, a critical item, we're, it's a key uh, story item we're going to need here in a few minutes. So that's good we picked that up now, that, that saved us some backtracking. I may go ahead and use my... Uh, runes to get Ben time. I definitely want to have Ben time for when we fight uh, a certain enemy type later on. I'm not going to spoil. That'll be coming up very soon, though. Um, and apparently, if you have the. Oh, sorry. If you have the Arcane Bond upgraded, you can. Uh, your, your allies, your fellow assassins, will benefit from Ben time as well, where they can still move in normal time. And you can just massacre an entire wave of enemies by doing that. It's pretty effective. So we're going to blink our way up to where the old geezer is. He's the founder of the Hatter Gang. They're sort of like his family, you know what I mean? So there's another guy who's been keeping him alive. We're going to just take him out really quick. We could actually talk to this guy. He's a fairly key story character. Oh man, he put up a fight. <laughs> So, this guy was kind of manipulating Mr. Hat in order to keep the Hatters running the way he wanted to. So, we're going to talk to Mr. Hat directly and see what he actually wants. Quick, come close. Look at the pickle I'm in. Words out about your deal with Lizzie. I know why you're here. You want that engine coil? It's yours. Assassin, kill me. This contraption trembles machine. Get it off me. Let me die. I'll give you what you want. All I have to do is pull that oil tank. No, not yet. The trembles machine keeps me alive. But he's rigged it so that gas will flood the mill if I die. <laughs> Insurance. Search trembles quarters. Upstairs, he has antitoxin he drinks every day, just in case I croak. You'll have to make some to survive the gas. But everyone will die, not just you. These hatters, they're not my hatters, don't deserve the name. Trimble's been calling the shots for years. <laughs> they can choke and die every last one. Hmm. Well, it looks like they pulled the rug out from under him and, you know, the, they hijacked the Hatters away from him. So, he doesn't seem to care if all the Hatters that are currently involved bite the dust. He just kind of wants to end things because he's been manipulated by the other guy for so long. So, we can actually just rip the whale oil tank out of there and that will de depower his messed up, jerry-rigged life support system there and cause him to die. But that will release the toxic gas which will poison the whole textile mill. So, we got to do something about that, of course. So, we're actually going to be looking for, because uh, the bargain we made is, obviously, he would let us take the engine coil when everything is all said and done. But in order for us to survive the process of killing him uh, the humane way that he wants to go out, we'd have to um, uh, create an antidote for ourselves. We're going out to this lab to find out how to do it exactly. And it's going to ask for a few different components. We already have one of them. There's some good items we can get in here. If we move this pillow, we can get this uh, audiograph thing that's going to tell us some more details about that. It's for a, uh, whatever those machines are called, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, it is, it's just called audiograph player, okay. So I was right about that terminology. So this gives us the formula for the antitoxin. So we have the bull rat fetus. The next thing we need is the ox rush flower, which we need to buy in the draper's ward from a certain merchant that lives there. And the final thing is that, uh, I don't remember the name of it, it's some kind of um, mineral. 
So we managed to pick up a blueprint back there on that table that was for uh, Baffle Dust. And that is a upgrade to the choke dust grenades we have right now. We'll be getting we'll be getting that uh, at the beginning of the next level. Um, once we have a blueprint like that, as I've explained before, you pick it up, and then the next level or the next time you find a shop like Piero or someone like that, you can then access that upgrade. So unfortunately, we can't access it right now until the beginning of the next level, but it'll be pretty good whenever we get it. So we're going to go get the salts down here. There's a shop worker down there who's innocent. We're going to leave her alone. And just take out the hatter. Of course, she'll still freak out if she sees us, but... Oh, well. Alright, so now we just have to fight our way out and go back to the... Uh, what do you call it? We have to go back to the Draper's Ward in order to find that merchant and buy the Oxford Flower off him. Then we should be able to get the engine coil and leave. Of course, we still have to go into the sewers and turn the power on, or, or I'm sorry, turn the water on. Uh, currently, the water is not flowing through the uh, the plant. So if we do that, then they won't need the engine coil anymore, and we'll be at, whoa, nice. So that was one of the brutal takedown finishers we get with Bloodthirsty, if I haven't demonstrated that yet. Knocked his head clean off. So we'll be doing plenty more of that before the end of the game, trust me. So, I'm going to go ahead and take this whale oil canister out, blow up that guy, and that's going to allow me to get through the wall of light here and have a quickie, uh, quick, easy access out of the building. Most of the guys here are dead now. Of course, if there are any more left, I'll just, I'll feel free to take them out. 